A while ago, I took a look at some LED flames that were basically a little microcontroller and some LEDs and it emulated the sort of movement of a flame. And I was wondering how long it was going to take before they ended up inside an actual glass bulb. Now, this is designed to emulate the classic neon flicker flame. This one is terrible. This one was bought online and... Ideally, with the, these neon flicker flame ones, they've got the two electrodes and there's supposed to be some sort of insulation inside that they don't actually glow on the inside. But these, this one is actually, I think a lot of the light is actually completely invisible because it's inside. So this is currently drawing 1.35 watts, very good power factor, mainly because it is just a resistor inside to drop the current through the neon. And uh, 5 milliamps, but it is, as you can see, it's not that great in effect. They're usually better than this. But they usually also get, also get quite hot because there is most of the, certainly in the UK, most of the voltage is being dropped across a resistor in the base and it does get baking hot. Here's the new super duper LED version. And uh, it's double sided as you'd expect, but it's doing that because it's only got LEDs on one side and it's got the two layers of phosphor and a sort of semi translucent PCB. But you can see that's quite a good effect, isn't it? It gives that sort of licking sort of flame. And the power consumption is between 0.25 and 0.3 watts. So let's just say quarter of a watt. 2 milliamps, terrible power factor, 0.43, uh, bouncing up and down just because it's a little switch mode supply inside. Okay, let's uh, explore further. So I shall uh, just unscrew this. Put the anti out the way. For those wondering, the hop meter is still here. It's just not very good at the super duper low power levels. It, it wouldn't show anything for this because it was so low power. And I shall get this out the way as well. This rather neat little flame, which has plummeted in price since the when I first reviewed it. Shall put that power supply off too. So by the wonders of only being able to buy this in a pack of four, I have already taken one apart. So here is the actual glass globe and the circuit board inside is pretty much as the other one it's but they've put a little bit of white heat shrink around i don't know why that is but there is a little eight pin chip and that is all that's on the board along with the leds and if we take a look at the circuitry the led itself i shall put this sideways now put it long ways yeah i'll put it long ways it kind of fits it has six sections of LEDs. That makes sense because it's an eight pin chip. It's got the plus supply volt, it's got zero volt, and then it's got six spare pins. So it uses them in this uh, staggered effect. So most of the time the lights are undulating down here, but every so often they'll lick up a wee bit higher to this one. And then it'll sort of flick right off by uh, lighting that one, then making extinction and uh, lighting the top one, which is seven LEDs, just to give that sort of like the flame darting off the top effect. So I'll just pause momentarily. I shall zoom in a little bit, in fact. I shall pause momentarily, though, so you can marvel at uh, the layout of the LEDs. The circuit board for the power supply looks like this. It is based on... Uh, BP8521, which is a classic little buck regulator with an inductor here, um, and it is uh, programmed set by default. It's set to put out 3.3 volts, and you'll often find this circuitry inside the little smart lamps where they have a Wi-Fi or Bluetooth module, and that's what this chip is for. But it's, it's made by Bright Power, who make basically chips for LED bulbs. And uh, the main components, you've got the bridge rectifier here, you've got a resistor here, which is 33 ohm, fusible resistor, the rectifier, uh, a smoothing capacitor, just one microfarad, 400 volt, I shall write that on, one microfarad, 400 volt. This is also one microfarad, 400 volt, and that is 220 microfarad at 10 volt. Uh, so there's an inductor, there's a capacitor, then an inductor, and then the capacitor. This is for filtering. Then we get the little unit. Not sure what the value of this inductor is. I shall draw it as an inductor. Um, not really referenced in the data sheet, but there is a 1K so a load resistor applied across that, and that just that's it. There's not really much else to see. I shall show you the schematic and how it differs from the official schematic. So I shall zoom in a bit. Here is the Bright Power datasheet. 
BPS Confidential. Shh, don't share it with anyone. There's the uh, reference to 3.3 volts. Here is the schematic, which just shows the bridge rectifier, smooth capacitor, the chip itself, uh, output capacitor, inductor, and the resistor. But the main differences here are they have added that extra protection of the inrush limiting 33 ohm resistor that also acts as a fuse. Now, if you imagine that the UK supply, um, this unit will operate from about 100 volts up to 240 volts, but the UK supply at 240 volts, the peak of the sine wave is about 330 volts. So if this 33 ohm resistor means that if the power gets turned on at the peak of the sine wave while these capacitors are discharged, then it will limit it about 10 amps. It just takes that spike off the inrush current, but it also acts as a fuse if things go horribly wrong. There's the bridge rectifier, there's the first smooth capacitor, an inductor, quite a high value. It looks like red, red, red. It's green with red text in it. Hold on. That looks like red, 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 doesn't it? I think it is. Yeah. Um, but that would equate to 2,200 microhenry, which is 2.2 millihenry. That then goes to the chip, which is just one chip does all. Uh, it does have another pin for a feedback, but that's this one goes to that via a diode, just for the fixed voltage feedback. Uh, there's an inductor of unknown value. If I was designing a circuit, I'd just buy someone else's circuit, take the inductor out and measure the value of it. That would help you calculate the value of the inductor. And there's the smoothing capacitor and a little load resistor just for stability. And then it goes out to the circuit board and I've not taken the circuit board out the globe because I know fine well what's on it. There's nothing there's nothing hiding under this heat shrink other than the chip. There's not even a capacitor, it's just the chip and the LEDs and that's it. And it is the 3.3 volt supply, zero volts, the microcontroller, the LEDs will almost certainly be referenced to the positive supply. Uh, and the channels have five LEDs, five, 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 and seven in parallel clusters to make up that sort of flame effect. And uh, that uh, it, it's all done by software after that. To get this picture, it was quite handy. I jittered the power supply and caused it to crash. And when I did that, it meant that uh, I was able to actually just take a close-up picture of all the LEDs lit at once. And it's worth mentioning that because there's more LEDs at the end, there's seven as opposed to five, it just makes it look a bit dimmer at the tip, which it would naturally anyway. Uh, very simple, very clever, and very neat. It's a good effect. Not bad at all. It's it's fairly subtle. It's not being too sort of like strobe and flickery. Let me show you again. I should just bring in the pink plug. I was looking for another one of these. I've got better ones than this, but this one is crap. That's why it was an eBay, I guess. But yeah, not bad. Not bad indeed. It is a fairly subtle... I mean, the pattern does repeat, as these things often do, but it's fairly ambient. It's uh, in a chandelier or a candelabra with loads of these lamps. It would look quite good. I should provide a link to the listing. I could only find one listing for these and only a multiple of four. Um, but I'd guess that, you know, it's a fairly new product and that as time goes on, they'll, the price will come down as they become popular. This one is marked H-E-W-A Hua Tech T E C H, by the look of it, kind of mottled. And then it says 100 to 240 volts. LED C35, 2 watts. It's not, it's quarter watt. 40 lumens, goodness knows what the intensity is. 1800K, that's a sort of warm white. Uh, but there we go. It's nice. It's a nice implementation. It was only a matter of time before they actually came out with them. Uh, I suppose the most complex thing would have been the low voltage power supply in the base, and that's easy now because of all the smart lamps with the 3.3 volt supply that is designed for powering things like the Wi-Fi circuitry. But there we have it, a neat little lamp. I like it a lot.